Welcome to the Assemblines Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance. So this is part two of a three-part series on how to fix your old computer. And in this part, what we want to do is actually take a look at how you can use a multimeter to diagnose problems with wires and chips on your circuit board. So let's get started. So first of all, with any computer or electronics, everything is on the board for a reason. So if, for example, you have damage on your board, say from a leaked battery or from a capacitor that's blown or a trace on the board, one of the little copper wires that's been broken, your computer is not going to work. So there's nothing magical about a computer. It's just a bunch of chips connected by wires and connected through solder. So if there's something wrong with it or damaged, there's nothing that you can do to make it work other than to fix it. So your job is to diagnose what the problem is and then fix it as simply as possible without hopefully causing more problems. Let's look at some simple things that you can diagnose using a multimeter. Now, we're gonna use the continuity tester, which indicates is there an electrical connection between two points. And with your multimeter, the very first thing you wanna do every time you turn it on to do a continuity test is just touch the leads together to make sure that the battery's still working and that you actually trust it and that it's plugged in. All right, so what we wanna do with this type of test is make sure are two things connected that should be connected or are two things connected that should not be connected. So for example, if I know that a trace or a wire runs from one pin all the way across the board to another one, I can use this to detect is there a break in that wire. So let's just take a quick example. And on the Apple II, the reset for the computer goes to the 6502 chip to pin 40. And to locate which pin that is, if you look at the chip itself, any chip on the board, it's gonna have a little dot next to pin one. And you can see maybe in the video, here's a very small dot next to pin one of the 6502. And so you know that this is pin one. You can also tell because it's almost always the pin that's directly to the right of the notch. So here's a notch here, and so this is pin one. Finally, some chips will actually have a little dot itself embedded in the chip. And then you just count around. So for example, the 6502 is a 40 pin chip, so I'm gonna count one through 20, and then 21 through 40. So this is pin 40 of the 6502. Now, I know that on the Apple, pin 40 of the 6502 is connected to pin number three over here on the keyboard. So counting from pin one, two, three. If I place my lead in there, and it doesn't matter whether I use black or red for this, then I should be able to touch that to pin 40 here and see that I have a connection. So this indicates that there is a solid connection between those two components, which is good. Occasionally, you're gonna to wanna to try and do this sort of continuity test when the computer is running. You can do that, however, just be aware that sometimes if you have things like capacitors that are in between, it can actually give you a false reading where it looks like there's a connection, which there actually is while the computer's running, but there isn't while the computer's off. And so just be aware of that, that sometimes doing it with a computer running is a little bit deceiving. Finally, when you're doing any tests with probes like this while the computer's on, make sure that when you're touching one of these pins here on the chip that you don't slip and accidentally touch two chips like that. When I've done that, what I've done is I've actually shorted those two pins together. That's fine if the computer's off, but if it's on, that could be disastrous because you might be connecting, say, a ground pin to a plus five volt pin or something like that. So just be really careful when you're using probes like this that you're just very steady when you actually touch the pins. Other things you can do with the multimeter while the computer is off, if there are resistors on the board, you can actually measure the resistance. And again, you have to be a little careful because sometimes, for example, this is a 1K resistor, but depending on how the circuit was laid out, if I put my leads here, I might actually get a resistance different than 1K, although in most cases it'll work. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change our multimeter to the two kilo ohm setting because that's bigger than 1K. 
So you always want to turn it to the larger setting so it's within the range. And then I'm just going to put my leads here, one in each side. And you can see I get a resistance, if I can hold it steady on there, of 1.011. Let's take a look at a few more things you can do with the continuity tester and I'll just use this super serial card here as an example. So sometimes you might be making repairs on a board or maybe you've actually made your own board and you might want to check to make sure our pins connected that shouldn't be connected. So for example if I had been soldering these two pins together here then I would take the continuity tester and just touch it to each of the pins and make sure that I did not get a beep. If you get a beep, then that might have indicated that you perhaps have a solder bridge that's actually connecting these two pins and you'd want to go ahead and repair that. And then you also want to test things like, okay, is this pin following the circuit? Is it connected to this one here? Yes. Yes. All right. And then is it connected to one of these pins down here that it should be? And so you can just go ahead and test for all of these different circumstances and make sure are the pins connected to what they should be connected and are they not connected to anything that they should not be connected to. One more point about that. So all of these chips here on old computers are typically labeled with the type of chip that it is. So for example, this says this is a 74LS365 and you can actually go online and search for that number and you'll be able to find in almost all cases the data sheet that describes what this chip is and what the different pins are on the chip. So for example, you could find out that pin number one is perhaps the ground pin and then you could use that information to make sure is that ground pin actually connected to ground on your circuit itself. Maybe one of the other pins is a plus five volt pin. And again, you could test, is that plus five volt pin hooked up to plus five volts? So the internet is definitely your friend in all these cases. Almost all these chips are actually still being manufactured in quantities for use in industrial applications. And so the information is actually readily out there. And in fact, you can actually get most of these chips online, either as new old stock or even as new replacements. So in this episode, we took a look at how to do some basic diagnostics and troubleshooting on your retro computer. And we showed the common tools that can be used. And we also demonstrated how to use a multimeter with the computer off. In the next episode, we'll take a look at how to do some troubleshooting while the computer's on using both the multimeter and the logic probe. So thanks for watching.